Hi everyone and welcome back to Astro Bloke. My name is Glenn. Today's video is about stacking. What do you use? I used to use Deep Sky Stacker. That's what I started with when I started Astro Photography. But when I moved on from a DSLR onto a dedicated Astro camera, I found that I wasn't getting the results I wanted and that made me start to look at other programs. I moved on to Astro Pixel Processor and that gave me much better results at a program that I actually quite enjoy using. I do now also own PixInsight. Um, I found that there was some gaps in the post-processing stages of Astro Pixel Processor and PixInsight is extensive and filled those gaps perfectly. I then was going to use PixInsight uh, on its own entirely but I really struggled with the uh, stacking side. Um, sometimes it would work, sometimes it would fail for no reason at all. Um, I was talking to my friend Joe from Joe's Astro Photo and he uses PixInsight and the WBPP uh, processing in utilities um, and he had had some issues but he used that for his stacking um, so we we had a discussion we went through it both together showed each other how each program works so there's two videos now this one which is showing how to stack in PixInsight which Joe is going to lead and uh, he's showing me how it works and then we got a part two video uh, I'll put a link up here there will also be a link at the end of this video um, showing uh, Astro Pixel Processor and how that works. I personally prefer that program and I think it's a little bit more intuitive to use. But anyway, I'll uh, let Joe take over and uh, if you do have any questions, please stick them in the comments section below. I'll do everything I can to answer your questions. So when I first got started in astrophotography, I used Deep Sky Stacker to do all my stacking. Once I moved away from um, Photoshop as my main editor in astrophotography and started using PixInsight, uh, I went ahead and started to use the weighted batch pre-processing in PixInsight to stack all of my photos. Since I got my ASI 294 MM Pro, I was starting to experience some weird issues going on with the PixInsight um, stacking script, the weighted batch pre-processing. And I called Glenn uh, one day online and I asked him for uh, his thoughts on the matter and maybe we could troubleshoot it together. And he really only used Astro Pixel Processor for his stacking. He seems to think that it does a much better job than PixInsight. And after um, I went through the steps of trying to troubleshoot and working with him, and then he showed me the Astro Pixel processor, I tend to agree with him. And after, not only do the images, the final images, look a little bit better with um, Astro Pixel processor, but I'm finding that I have a lot more control and in that program and I also like the fact that uh, the darks and master darks are readily apparent. I called Glenn and we decided that once we had gotten into it, hey let's record this, make a video for everybody to see what we were doing and talking about. So there's going to be some things in part one in the um, weighted batch pre-processing that um, neither one of us really knew about. Now after I was done I went back and I looked in, uh, did some research and I found that uh, in one part of the video, I do state that I, at one point I was able to put all of my flat darks just in inside of darks, and it would uh, figure out which ones were which, uh, which ones were the dark flats or the flat darks or the flat dark flats, as we tend to call them now, um, and which ones were just the plain darks. 
And I could not get that to work anymore, and I'm still not getting it to work. And with the new version, um, it's got a control panel, and when I go in there, um, it's still telling me that I have issues when I'm trying to load them all in there. So I'm not sure what's going on. Um, I think it's just my version of the, I, I probably need to uninstall and reinstall, but sit back, relax, enjoy the video. If you've never stacked in PixInsight before or in Astro Pixel Processor, then I hope this really helps. And uh, hopefully it'll help make up your mind as to which one you would want to stack in if um, you want to move up from the uh, results that you're getting in Deep Sky Stacker. What do you mean? You don't stack in uh, PixInsight, Glenn? I thought you. Th I thought pretty much everyone who used PixInsight used that as the stacking program. I feel no, silly. I, what are you I, stacking? I, I use Astro Pixel Processor, but um, I started with that program, so I, I, I had it anyway, and I moved from uh, Deep Sky Stacker onto that, and then. Um, what, what that lacked in post-processing PixInsight obviously blows away. So I, I moved on to PixInsight, but whenever I tried to stack with PixInsight, I always kept coming across problems. And um, yeah, I just had issues. And then I always got uh, another thing that like with um, Astro Pixel Processor, it allows you to stack lights, flats, dark flats, or uh, flat darks. Or dark flat darks. Uh, Dark flat darks, yeah. Let's call them dark flat darks, just yeah. to save confusion. Well, everybody, so, <laughs> everybody's got their own way of saying it, and, and and the people who like to say it one way get upset with the people who say it the other way. So, to be on the safe side and not make anyone upset, let's just call them dark flat darks. Well, I say potato, <laughs> and you say potato. <laughs> no, no, I say potato. Do you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Tomato as well. Tomato. Mm -hmm. No, we don't say tomato, we say tomato. Really? But you say potato. Yeah, I don't what say potato. I oh, know. Spuds is what we <laughs> normally say, actually. <laughs> anyway, uh, I digress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, they, uh, so basically, yeah, because it lists all of the different types of calibration frame you could have. So you, there's bias, there's dark flats or dark flat darks or flat darks, um, lights, darks. Whereas I found on PixInsight, it only has bias. It doesn't say anything about dark flats or dark flat darks. Okay, I can show you. Why don't I show you? Let's let's dive into it real quick. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'd really like second. to know how to use it, but sure. and, and then I can, well, I can show you how Astro Pixel Processor works, and then hopefully I'd like um, that, yeah. A, a, our audiences can see the two workflows of stacking data and uh, hopefully, you know, get something from it. That's a good idea. I like that. Let's, let's do it. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Then. do you want to do PixInsight first? Yeah, let's jump in real quick. All right, Glenn. So I've got um, PixInsight open and what I normally do after I make sure that I like all of my subs using Blink or B-Link is um, I go into the batch pre-processing under scripts and weighted batch pre-processing. You yeah. could do all of this manually, but this script is act actually does everything just like you would do manually. I see a is lot of people the, do it the both new ways. upgrade that's just come out. This is, and I'll show you the control panel. It's actually oh, kind of neat. Yeah. It, it didn't have the control panel before. The, the dark flats are the same exact um, time as the flats. And that way, um, instead of using bias, we use those. But in order to get around this in PixInsight, um, all that you have to do is you go to Add Flats, and then you go to your wherever your um, flats are. In this case, uh, I've got some here. I'll just take these sulfurs, for instance. And you'll have to do this for each filter. Um, and then, of course, if you're on color, you just have to do this once. Um, us mono yes. people have to do it I, as many I times. I think it's as important take. that you mention the difference between bias and dark flats or dark flat darks, um, <laughs> because when, <laughs> because when I first started, I had a DSLR, and obviously I used to do bias, and I couldn't quite understand what a dark flat was. And any anything I read or or, or saw 
following that they they kind of said they were the, the kind of the same thing and I, I didn't quite understand what 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 they meant by that and then it wasn't until i got an astro camera that i had a starburst that i realized that bias didn't work it, it just wouldn't stack yeah. right it wouldn't look right and then that was when i started to do uh dark flats dark, uh, that, dark yeah flat exactly so if you have a dslr you have to take the bias and then yes. you just use the bias with your darks to calibrate your flats that's all that's you're doing right. and, and, and if you've the, got an astro camera you go for dark flats not bias right and that's you, what always threw me with pix insight because it only asks for bias right well and if you've got an astro camera that doesn't have any amp glow to it um you could still go the bias route but honestly the the dark flat it, it takes you're talking seconds per um sub so it doesn't well, take it, long and it's a lot easier i think it's better to match your your flats and, and your dark flats well that's what nina does automatically i think astro uh, right. sorry Ash, uh, uh, astro photography tool i think that does yeah, the APT. same as well if you take if you use the flats tool it matches your dark your dark flats to your flats in in time yeah so that's yeah it's a lot easier i think um but again, with the DSLR, you, you're going to want to do the bias route, which is fine because every, every all these programs have the bias. Right. Yeah. In here. Yeah. So in order to calibrate your flats, um, so that you get master flats, basically you just you add the flats like we just did, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add the darks. And in this case, we're just going to go to the dark flats. Yeah. And we're going to pick the same the the same set of sulfur. And this was made in Nina in the Flats Wizard. And then pretty much you're just going to run it just the way it is. You'll pick an output directory, which I just made a little temp output directory. Um, and you could just pick that here. And, and then you run it. And when you go to run it, it's going to tell you, well, there's no bias frames and there's no light frames. And that's fine. And then you sure? click continue yeah. and it'll run. Now, I, I'm not going to click continue at the moment because... Um, these files from the 294 are almost they're big yeah they're almost 100 meg each and yeah. so that'll pretty much just um freeze up my computer I, I need to upgrade but anyway what'll happen is after you're done with this um let me open up a, a window you're going to get a folder because i called it temp and uh, or master flats here and, and you're going to see the calibrated the logs and then your master. And in mm -hmm. the master, you'll see that it'll have your master flat in sulfur right here. Okay. I'll, I'll run it again for oxygen. I'll, I'll run it again for um, hydrogen. Can, can I ask on there, Joe, can you, can you stack those? Can you stack the sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen at the same time, and it would do all three masters, or will it get confused? Well, oddly enough... And, and I don't know when this changed, unfortunately, so I really don't want to give bad information. But at some point, I could come into Pix uh, and Sight, and I think it was before weighted batch processing. It was just the batch pre-processing script. Yeah. And and you could put in all your flats, all your dark flats, and all your darks, and all your lights, and it would just do it all. It would make all the masters. Some things change now because when I try and put in my dark flats uh, under the darks it, it doesn't separate them see how here it's got 10.26 seconds and then yeah. it would and and then you'll see the um, these are the sulfurs and then down here it would have like eight point something seconds maybe for the oxygens and it would separate them and it doesn't do that any longer um, and when I go into the new control panel uh, you'll see 20 dark frames. So if I put them all in, what it does is it it, it just lumps all the frames together. So for no, now, it's not, it's, so it's not so it's not calibrating each different group separately. Then so it, that yeah, you know, I, I don't so want to. I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, hopefully, no. if there is a workaround on that, or is something that we well, not, I, I just do not doing. Separately. Somebody can maybe let us know in the comments. That'd be really useful. Oh, that would be fantastic. You know, if somebody knows. somebody knows how that works, because obviously, it's not. I mean, if you're if you're one shot color, there's no issue at all because you've only got one set of uh, dark flats and that, anyway. And, and that would it's work only, just fine. You can do it all at the same time. You don't yeah, have to do this. But separately. obviously, if you've done a 
an LRGB and narrowband set of data for a target, which we could do with our mono cameras, <clears throat> that, that adds quite a bit of work in, doesn't it? Because you've got seven filters there that you're going to have to make individual. I mean, it's not a big job, but uh, you've got, you know, it's a, a lot of organizing, isn't it? And getting it's a lot more organizing. Right mm. Yeah, I think the times is the same. It's just that it's a lot more convenient if you could just put everything in. Yeah. And hit okay. play. So, so this is how you would do the darks and then one or the flats. And once I make the master flats, let me show you what we would do. So I'm just going to clear these. And so we'll actually, this is how I would stack. So um, I would open up the light and I would pick something. So in this case, I think I'll, I'll pick this California nebula. And the nice thing here is I can hit control a, it selects everything, say open. Yeah. And, and you'll notice that it does show you like, here's your hydrogen, yeah. here's your oxygen, here's your sulfur. <clears throat> and then That's good. when we go to the flats on this new version, the old version used to have to tell it to make masters. It's going to read those automatically and tell if it's a master. So I'll come over to my um, flats wizard folder where I have them all. Okay. And I save the H and O here. So I'll open those and you'll see those as well. And then I need to click one more time um, because I had my. Uh, does that star next to it show that it's a milestone? Is that what is that what does that? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And okay. it's also bolded. Um, mm -hmm. see, these aren't bolded. Yep. And then on the darks, the first time you run your darks through, especially yep. if you've got a cool dedicated astro camera, you, you'll build a dark library. Um, and so the first time you run your darks through, and we'll, we'll just add them in here. Let me go to the dark folder. So here's my dark folder, and I've yeah. got some 300 second gain 120 uh, minus 15 degrees Celsius. And we'll just select those. And after, it'll actually give you a master. And, and it'll be in the folder that you tell it to. So now we're going to tell it to go to the... Um, the California Nebula that I have, and and PI, which is I just make these called Pix and Sight. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and I, you can tell I've done this one before. And when you're done, it'll have your calibrated, your logs, your master, your registered. And when you go into the master, and of course there's nothing in there at the moment because I'm I'm it's, um, it's asking me for a directory, so I could show you after we're done. Yep. So now this is ready to run. And when I click run, it's just going, it's going to tell me that I have no bias and that's fine. Interesting. So, a question I'd like to ask you, Joe, is the number of uh, calibration frames you use. Oh, that's a good question. Well, in this particular case, I've only got, you know, a handful of, of lights. I use, I like, I like to try and take uh, as many lights as possible, but yeah. I almost pretty much just standardize on 20 flats, 20 dark flats and and 20 darks okay. now that there's a there's no reason why you can't do more i mean for people who want to do more that's great but there is a, a diminishing returns yeah there's a big thread that i once read and i'll i'll just share what what it was basically talking about and it was saying that for each uh stage on your calibration frames that you stack you get a sort of step of improvement whether right. it be the flat size so, so. And if you used, obviously everyone starts with one, yeah, one, <laughs> yeah. one, 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 one dark, one, one, one flat, one dark flat. Oh, okay. And then the next step is two and then it should be four, eight, Correct. 16, 32. So really you're doing 20, but what that shouldn't really be any different to 16 because really the next step from 16 is 32. Well, it's about it's it's like a half a step better. Than yeah, 16. but I, I I always think it's a bit like with the cameras when you do your ISO settings, it's exactly the same as that. If it, you know, whenever you change yes. your ISO, they always say you should stay in the the the, the set set the set steps. You know, of two hundred, four hundred, eight hundred, sixteen hundred, thirty two hundred, sixty four hundred. Right. Because... Okay, well, it makes it easier, but that's not. You don't necessarily have to. You don't um, have to, but I, I, I always have. Um, and, and that's I found fine. It, I, I don't see it work, any. But 
when I did quite a lot of tests with calibration frames. I did lots and lots of testing when I had my first Astro camera. And what I actually found was that for me, and I, I've carried it on through all the time, is that 32 has been a sweet spot. I found that 16 calibration frames, darks, whether it be whatever it was, mm. never really quite, you could see a good, a good improvement when you went to 32. But when I went to 64, it, it, like you say, the diminishing returns, it didn't really show much improvement. So for me, 32 was always the sweet spot. It's only interesting to see how people do it differently. And that's just what I, I just wanted I to like share that. what I, I did. I, I appreciate because, that. I'm going to give that a shot. I'm going to actually change my settings to 32 and try it. Just try I mean, I did tests and I found it made a difference. I did notice cool. the difference, but one, I didn't notice any real improvement once I went above that. That's why I love working with you, Glenn. I, I learn <laughs> something new all the time. That's fantastic. Well, you make me do all the work and you just sit there and mop up, yeah? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, actually, <laughs> I'm going to have you edit this whole thing and then I'm just going to insert it in my video, so. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I get like a, you know, I get something out of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's fine. I'm absolutely happy with that. Do you want me to show you how the... Astro Pixel processor works then. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Should we do that now? And then, that. Or do you want to do you want to run that and then we can look at what comes out of the end and while, while well, we're doing actually, the Astro Pixel processor? I actually ran this um, earlier oh, cool. in the day. So let me just yeah, let me show you real quick. So what you're going to get is the master file, and you're going to see your dark, your master dark. So now you can actually copy this and put this in your um, folder of master darks, and you don't have to spend the time to to calibrate and, okay. and integrate all of those darks every time. But you would just grab your masters, and of course I could just drag them here. or Yep, you're open, in Pixel but... Saw already, yeah. And real quick, Glenn, do you, do you see this oxygen? Yeah. Do you, do you see this halo and this yeah. halo? Is that, your, you. is that your ZWO filter? That is sorry, your, your ZWO filter. I, I, I'm going to have a special video where um, I crush it. <laughs> I, I actually have some an Astrodon Oxygen 3 coming, and I'm really hoping that the next time we're meeting... And <laughs> you didn't, yeah, like, no, it's all that. My, my, my chroma on. filter definitely gets rid of the halos. It, it makes a big difference. They're nice subs. Uh, that's such a nice bit of detail there on the California. That's good. Yeah. Where's that HA? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really nice. That's pretty nice. I hope that video has been of some help to you. Hopefully it's answered some questions. If you do have any other questions, as I said before, please stick them in the comments section below. I will do everything I can to answer them. Part two of this video series, which is the stacking in Astro Pixel processor. There's a link here. Please watch that. Uh, and then you can uh, see the two programs together, make a comparison, and maybe it might help you make a decision on which one you might like to use. Both programs have a free trial, so it's well worth downloading them and doing the free trial and trying them out and seeing which you prefer. Hope you all keep well, and I'd like to wish you all clear skies till next time.